Today I'm spilling the beans and letting you know why I won't be sewing any capsule collections or doing capsule wardrobes or doing any of that in my sewing planning. Maybe I'll do it again in my lifetime, maybe, but it's not an idea I'm really taken with. Stay tuned to see why. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and as I promised, if you saw my video that I posted previously where I showed you 14 garments, 41 looks. I mentioned there that I was going to let you know a little bit more about my thoughts on sewing in this way, trying to sew and plan in this way, where you have a lot of garments that go together in the styles and the color palettes and all of that. So I did want to give that a go. I'd never done it before and I'm still on the same train thought I had before actually going through that <laughs> at the end of the year in 2020 but to have a proper opinion I actually had to put myself through that and see it for myself whether it's something that I want to plan for in the future or keep doing you know it's better to know and have an opinion after trying things rather than just having an opinion based on theory at least that's how I view life and I have a few notes here, I have a few thoughts to share with you and I know they will be conflicting and I know these are like my personal opinions of course, I'm just sharing them. You are welcome to disagree of course. It doesn't mean that I'm going to change my mind or be convinced that sewing capsule uh, wardrobes is something that I want to do. I mean no one's going to convince me, that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> and you know I welcome your disagreeing comments, of course. I'm just saying that because I anticipate that there can be some people that are really passionate about this type of, of living. And maybe not even seamstresses might find this video, just people in interested in fashion. And I am not a fashion person. I'm not a fashion um, vlogger or that type of thing. My thing is about sewing. <laughs> I'm talking in the context of sewing for myself in this way so that I can have a capsule wardrobe or have set groups of collections that go together. Now I know this could seem in theory like a good idea, having less items of clothing in your wardrobe might make it easier for you to get dressed, you have less options, you waste less time thinking about what you're gonna wear and you just open, there's like nothing there and you just put whatever's in there. I know that's not the way it works, but capsule wardrobes usually have a limited amount of, of items in there. I'm not talking about any specific school of thought or rules or numbers, I'm just saying, that there is a sort of limit into the things that you can have in there. And yeah, that could be something that some people find as a positive if it's something that provides stress for them, not knowing what to wear every day and having less options might be something that helps. In my case, it's not the case. <laughs> I like having a lot of options. I like opening my wardrobe and seeing a lot of things there and having a lot of options. I would feel very, very stressed if I opened my wardrobe and there were only 20 things in there. Um, that would make me super anxious. Some common ideas about capsule wardrobes just don't resonate with me and also because I don't just have one style of dressing. I dress very very casually. I dress in a way that's very formal and a little bit in between as well. I go to church so I have very nice things that I wear to church when I go to church when lockdown is over of course. Lovely dresses with blazers going towards a for more formal type of dress. And I like having options for that, of course. And then I also have pieces that are more informal, but still going towards the formal dress because that's just the way I like to dress. So when you're planning a type of collection or a type of capsule wardrobe and you have to choose your pieces, it's much harder to get every type of thing in there that will <laughs> adjust to the way I dress. Very formal, very informal and in between. It's just harder. And maybe for someone that dresses 99% of the time in a very informal way, it'll be easier to decide on the amount of garments that they want to do, on the color palette and that sort of thing. For me, it just makes it harder. And in the collection I did, I have a couple of dresses, a couple, I have a couple of very formal items in there and I have a couple of informal ones. And trying to pair them up was against all of me, but I still tried to pair them up and I think they do work but not organically, not if I really, really wanted to pair them. I paired them in theory because I know they go together, but I don't know if I will actually pair them up in real life to actually head out the, the door. I don't know if I make any sense. I think if you have less garments in your wardrobe, you will still be using them a lot. They'll get a lot of rotation, a lot of wear. 
they'll get washed and laundered a lot it's not like you're gonna be washing less clothes at least for me I wear a garment and I wash it I don't wear a garment several times before I wash it it's just hot I'm sweating I'm not gonna wear a garment again <laughs> so if I had less items in my wardrobe no matter the quality of the fabric and how careful I am with sewing them so that they are turned out sturdy you know they, they will be damaged much faster than I would want them to than if I just wore them occasionally and just enjoyed them when I really felt inspired to wear them they will end up lasting longer at least in my opinion I'm just really sad it makes me really sad to think that I'll make something very beautiful in a very good quality fabric that I took a really long time to make you know in the best way possible and then I'm just gonna be like washing it, washing it, and washing it, and then it'll be destroyed faster than what I want it to be. Those ideas clash for me because I don't want to have my items worn in such high rotation and have them damaged before I really want them to. I want them to last. I find the idea that some people have that capsule wardrobes are a sort of superior way of life or a superior way of dressing than all the other people a little bit stressful. Um, you don't just change and get that lifestyle in a second you know sometimes you have to invest a lot of resources just the idea that one way to live your life and dress yourself or sew items for yourself is better than the other doesn't sit right with me i'm not saying that my way is better than the others i'm just saying that we should be able to choose and sew the things that make us happy and not feel stressed and anxious because there's a group of people telling us that this is the way it has to be that there are all these rules <clears throat> that you need to sort out your closet, declutter it, get rid of things. That, that just makes me really sad. And getting rid of things that I made just for the sake of it because I want to fit in this like fun thing to do a capsule wardrobe. It just it makes me really sad to be honest. <laughs> if I had to go in there with a bag and start taking things out of my wardrobe that I made with all the love in the world or with all the dedication you know even just the fact that they are part of this channel as tutorials means that I am attached to them I love them I love all the pieces in there and why would I want to declutter my wardrobe and get rid of things that I invested resources time and poured a lot of my heart and soul into I'm not saying that your wardrobe needs to be overflowing and exploding Especially as we're sewing, we really can't get to that point like it is possible with people who don't sew and who consume fast fashion and just purchase, 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 purchase. Usually when we're sewing, we can't go in that rhythm. So we can't really be classed as fast fashion because we are just sewing a lot of things for ourselves, you know. I'm sure a lot of you or most of you will not be able to sew more than a few garments a month. Before I had a channel, I think I probably made about four things a month, which was a nice amount. But now that I have a sewing channel, I tend to make a lot more than that. And that's fine, it is my job, but I also enjoy the process and I also love all my pieces. About sustainability, we can try and do our best with our sewing by looking after our handmade garments for as long as they can live and just take good care of them until they are literally shreds. That's as long as I wear my me-made garments. You know, also there's a thing about resources, of not buying excessive fabric that you know you're not gonna use, you're gonna end up with scraps that you don't wanna use. I know a lot of us that so want to use our scraps and are always looking for projects that are appropriate I can be sustainable and I'm very happy in the way that I approach sewing in that way without having to only have 10 pieces of clothing you know what I mean and as I said I'm not consuming fast fashion I'm not buying anything in the shops I'm buying a pair of shoes a year maybe a handbag but otherwise I'm making everything and it's still slow compared to what fast fashion is. Now for those of you who are starting to sew and still don't know what your style is, what items you think look better on you that make you feel the happiest, if you restrict yourself to a certain amount of garments only and only a certain color palette because in theory you think it's going to work, it's really going to limit your process of exploration and actually finding out what works for you and what you like and part of that whole process of finding what really makes you happy is actually making things that don't make you happy <laughs> now I know it's a process that a lot of people want to skip and it, they just wish it were just very fast like instant based on theory this 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 you're gonna make that you're gonna be happy but you can't really know until you've actually done it 
and I've started sewing as a kid. I've had to adapt my sewing to like really gangly, pre-puberty kid, to like teenager, pregnant, everything. And I've had a lot of time to experiment with styles, with fabrics, with colors, and to find at, after my 40s that I sort of know really well what I like and what I don't like. It's a process. And if you're new to sewing and you want to be new to sewing, learn how to make garments and limit what type of garments you make. It'll just really hurt you in a way that you won't really ex get to explore that much to find your style. Because the way you find your style is actually putting things on. How you feel in them is the most important thing of all. Sometimes I've made a garment in the past that is beautifully sewn, the fabric is amazing, it's on the hanger, it's a beautiful garment. And then when I put it on myself, I'm like, mmm, it's just not me. It's just not what makes me feel good. Example of that are big circle skirts. In theory, they're super pretty, right? <laughs> Every time I'd made one, I would never end up wearing that dress. And let me tell you, I didn't make a full skirt with a dress like that once. I made several and it took several attempts to try to convince myself that I liked it because in theory it was pretty to finally decide no nope, no nope, I'm not making full circle skirts or anything with a lot of volume any dress that requires tons of yardage is just not for me but how did I get to that by making stuff that didn't really work out I think going through the process of making things that you don't like is a way to find the things that you really will like but if I want to tell you about my sewing plans for 2021 I will show you a blank piece of paper because I have absolutely nothing there all I can write there in that white piece of paper is being happy being happy for me means being creative I have a wardrobe behind me with my fabric stash, my fabric collection, let's call it like that. And I love going in there, feeling my fabrics, looking at them. I have a mirror, that mirror, I just drape it over me. And just feeling inspired to sew whatever I want, whenever I want, whether it's a garment that's going to work very, very well in my lifestyle that I'll get a lot of wear out of or something that is just for my own happiness, my own satisfaction. It'll be a special garment that will get worn only a few times, but I know that every time I wear it, I'm going to feel amazing. So it doesn't all have to be perfect. I don't have to have everything planned. I don't need to fill in gaps in my wardrobe. <laughs> I have enough items in my wardrobe to get me out the door whenever I want and not be too invested in having a perfect type of wardrobe. Not for me. So in summary, all I wanted to say is I don't find joy in limitations of any type. I love sewing, it's what makes me happy. I have so many other limitations in my life. I'm in a foreign country, I have a lot of limitations with that. Fortunately, I can speak the language and understand everything perfectly so I can communicate as well as anyone but it still means that I still feel limited. I'm not in my own country. I still feel that I can't achieve everything that I would want to. Due to the context of moving, I've had to put on hold a beautiful career midwifery that is put on hold right now that I can only practice every now and then. When I go back home, I'm not able to practice my profession here legally. It's just very complex. So, so many limitations. Why would I want to put a limitation on one of the activities that makes me very happy every day, which is sewing, creating amazing garments that I love, choosing a beautiful fabric with a beautiful pattern, making that mix, sewing it up, filming it for you, sharing with you everything that I know, that makes me very happy. And while I enjoyed sewing my purple collection because I wanted to do that for a very long time because purple is one of my favorite colors, it wasn't as enjoyable as I thought it was going to be, mainly because of the planning process. That thing drained me as soon as I was done planning, which took me ages, I was already exhausted. <laughs> so even though I enjoyed sewing the garments from the So Beautiful book, I know I would have been happiest if I'd taken the eight patterns and sewn them with whatever other fabrics I wanted and just made them as individual garments that weren't meant to be worn together that I could just enjoy, you know, pairing them with all the other things I make that are in my wardrobe. So I would definitely come back to this book and make it in other fabrics, not as a collection or a capsule wardrobe of any type. 
you haven't seen my video where I show you the 14 garments and the 41 looks, you can go ahead and watch it. I'll link it down below. I love how everything turned out. I love how everything looks, but the whole process wasn't enjoyable. It wasn't enjoyable at all. I love all the patterns in the book, but I know I would have enjoyed them much more if I had just chosen this or that fabric and made things in the fabrics that I just really wanted to pair them to, not just because they were purple. <laughs> so those are all my thoughts. Don't expect any type of collections from me or any, any type of sewing where I want to pair things with other things. It's just not my thing. I want to be happy. I want to be free. And being creative is all related to that. Whenever I try to over plan is when I get really frozen and I lose my sojo. To keep my sojo alive, I need to feel that freedom of sewing anything that I want whenever I want. And I hope you enjoy what you see because whatever I'm making and showing for you is what is making me happy. Also, I take into account things that I want to show, like the V neckline series that I've started. Maybe you've seen the first one of that, of that one. With every garment I sew, I'm always wondering and planning ahead while I'm cutting out what other things that will help you discover new ways to sew, just to be limitless in sewing. So those are my thoughts. I'd love to know what you think and I will see you very soon with another video.